All right, so we looked at ways to look at more and more derivatives to get better and better approximation of the function using uh, Taylor polynomials. Um, let's take this to the extreme. So do it with infinite derivatives, all of the derivatives, and uh, see if you can write down something like a Taylor polynomial. Here we go. Okay. So uh, what you get in the end, it's what's called the Taylor series. So uh, let's see what that's like. So basically what we're doing is we're doing Taylor polynomial, except there's no highest degree. Uh, we keep on adding um, terms with higher and higher derivatives and um, take the limit, right? So uh, let's do an example. Okay, so let's start with an easy example or easiest example, e to the x has all the derivative equal to e to the x. Okay, and if when x is equal to zero, uh, all of the derivatives are equal to one because e to the zero is equal to one. Um, so we have Taylor uh, series for this would be uh, one plus uh, x plus x squared over two factorial plus x cubed over three factorial and so on. Or um, let's write it as infinite series. So starting with n equals zero to infinity, uh, x to the n over n factorial. Okay, so this is Taylor polynomial taken to the limit um, using all of the derivatives of e to the x. Uh, let's do something similar with sine. So sine has this periodic derivative pattern. So g prime is cosine g double prime is negative sign, and then g triple prime is negative cosine, and then it repeats. The derivative, the fourth derivative would be sine again. Um, so this goes through the cycle of when you plug in x equals to zero, uh, we get 0, 1, 0, negative 1, and then repeat. Um, so the Taylor series is going to look like, uh, so the first term is 0, the, the first non-zero term is going to be uh, the first derivative, so that's going to be 1, 1 times x over 1 factorial, I'm just going to write that as an x. And then uh, the second derivative goes away because zero. The third derivative is going to be negative one. And then x to the fifth is gonna be positive. x to the seventh would be negative. Okay, so if I wanna write this as an infinite series, uh, let's see. We could uh, e alternate signs, so we could start with negative one to the n. Um, and we only count the odd powers. So x to the two n plus one, I think that will do it. So when n is equal to zero, uh, the power would be one. So that would be the first term. And it would be, uh, well, we want, I think we want, oh no, when n is equal to zero, this would be positive. So this is good. Um, and then we kind of divide by 2n plus 1 factorial. Okay. And that would be the, the Taylor series for sine function. Uh, let's, let's do one more. Um, so h is 1 over 1 minus x. So we, we've seen this function before. h prime is going to be uh, 1 over 1 minus x. So we get negative by the power rule, and then by chain rule, we have to multiply by derivative of the inside, which is negative one. So that becomes positive. 
and and if you see the pattern the nth derivative is going to be n factorial on the top because of the power rule uh, and then one minus x to the n um, n plus one in the denominator okay uh, when x is equal to zero uh, the denominator will just be one to the n plus first power which is just one um, so uh, it'd be n factorial so the Taylor series is going to be, so remember Taylor series uh, terms is going to be uh, x to the nth power times the derivative at zero, which is, um, which is gonna be n factorial. And then you, you're gonna divide that by n factorial. So uh, they cancel out uh, and the coefficient will all be equal to one. And if I wanna write that as a, uh, infinite sum, you could write it this way. Um, and some of you watching this video might have already realized that this infinite series has been uh, talked about in this class before, except with a different name. It's, it's a geometric series. So when I first introduced this to you, uh, we wrote it this way equals zero to infinity a times r to the n is eight over one minus r. Um, and then this is exactly the same as this thing uh, when a is equal to one and r is equal to x, right? So um, if you add up x to the n for all the powers of n, um, you're gonna get one over one minus x. Um, and we came to this formula in a different way uh, when we first studied geometric series. But yeah, um, that's why I wanted to do that one. Um, okay, so um, we could do this for like a lot of our familiar functions. And uh, uh, here are the table of Taylor series that you could just take for granted. So we've already done e to the x and sine, uh, cosine, um, we actually already found the pattern for the even powers. Um, so uh, that's equal to this. Um, one over one minus X we did on the bottom. And um, if you integrate this thing, um, then uh, you could get the, the Taylor series from natural log as well. Okay, so um, as far as expectation for final exam, um, I'm gonna ask you questions about Taylor series. Um, you could just look at these tables uh, and use these without rederiving the formula. Um, but if there were any other uh, function, then you'll have to derive the pattern and uh, write down the formula yourself. Um, you have to show work for full credit is what I mean. Um, but for these five functions, you could just uh, take it as granted. Um, so when we're doing infinite sum, uh, when you're doing the series, uh, infinite series, sometimes it converges and sometimes it diverges. Um, so uh, you could take for granted that uh, the Taylor series for e to the x, sine of x and cosine of x, they all converge for all x, uh, for any um, x value. Uh, but the geometric series we know only converges between negative one and one. Um, and a natural log also only converges between negative one and one. So you could just, uh, you can take these for granted. All right. Okay. So now what I wanna cover is, so we got five Taylor series and working out the formula for Taylor series is a lot of work. Right? We have to take infinitely many derivatives and we don't have time for that. So we have to come up with a pattern of what the derivatives look like. Uh, and then you plug it into that um, uh, involved formula. Uh, there are other ways to come up with Taylor series. So I'm gonna show you four different um, techniques for getting new Taylor series formula from old ones. Okay, so one, 
is uh, using an old Taylor series formula and do a substitution. So note that e to the x is given by this Taylor series. Okay. And if we have a new function, e to the negative x squared, well, you could get this function if you plug in negative x squared into the x here. Uh, and you could do that with the Taylor series. So uh, the formula for this guy is going to be n equals 0 to infinity, negative x squared to the n over n factorial. Um, and then you could separate the like uh, powers. So you can distribute the powers and get negative one to the n. So it's alternating. And uh, x squared to the nth power is same thing as x to the 2n over n factorial. Um, so all, we, all I did was uh, substitute and distribute the exponent. Um, and then we have uh, the Taylor series for e to the negative x squared. So that's great. Um, like taking derivative of this guy uh, many times it's difficult because with the chain rule you're going to get different powers of x in front of e and then you have to start using product rule and it gets more and more complicated. Um, but if you use this method you can get to the uh, formula right away. Um, with this guy 1 over 1 plus x squared uh, this thing is similar to 1 over 1 minus x. And uh, again, if you plug in negative x squared into this x, uh, we can get that formula. So I know that uh, the Taylor series for this guy looks like x to the n. So uh, if you plug in negative x squared in here, We'll get negative one to the n, so it's alternating, and you just look at the even powers. Uh, then you'd get this Taylor series. Okay, so uh, we've got it for this guy. Um, yeah, uh, it, it doesn't have to be just the sign and the power as well. So, uh, for example, if you have x uh, x over seven. Um, You could plug that in as well. So the first step is plugging it in, and then I distribute the powers. And then seven to the nth on the denominator. Um, so that's kind of extra, but uh, th that will take care of the divided by seven part in the exponent. Uh, okay. So that's one method, um, just recognize a Taylor series that's similar to it and then substitute to get that form. Okay, uh, another thing you could do is multiplication or division by some power of x. So um, here I know what the Taylor series for x cosine of x is um, and then I'm multiplying x squared to it. Um, so uh, what can we do? Well, we know the Taylor series for cosine. So let's write that down first. Okay. Uh, and then we could just bring x squared in to the inside of the sum. Um, and then um, I wanna add the exponents. Um, we get negative one to the n x to the 2n plus 2. Okay, so it just, you just add 2 to the power of the, the, the power of x, uh, and then we're done. That's the, the Taylor series for this guy. Um, you could also divide, right? That would be subtracting from the power. Uh, so 1 over x times sine. And sine looks like cosine except all the odd powers. Okay, this time I'm dividing by x, so that subtracts one from the power. Now I only have 
uh, even powers. But the denominator is still odd number factorial. Okay, uh, I hope that made sense. So you could uh, kind of multiply or divide by some power of x and just kind of update um, the exponent uh, in the in the Taylor series you had before. Okay, um, you could also do calculus, and what I mean by that is that you could take derivative or integral of some uh, Taylor series that you already know. Um, so, for example, when we have arctan. Um, you could recognize that as the integral or antiderivative of one over one plus x squared. Um, so that's one of the, the integration formulas from Calc 2. And we actually already figured out uh, what the Taylor series of one over one plus x squared looks like. Um, so we could take this Taylor series, uh, integrate it, and get the arctan. So let's do that. Okay, so I want to integrate uh, this, this um, infinite series. Uh, and basically, how do we integrate this guy? Well, we put the integral sign inside and everything is constant with respect to x except for the x to the power part. So all you have to use is the, the power rule on this thing. So you use the power rule, you add one to the power and divide by that power. Um, and then when we uh, integrate, we have to worry about plus constant term. Um, for our case, uh, to figure out what that constant should be, uh, we can plug in x equals to zero on both sides of the equation. So uh, we know arctan of zero is equal to zero. And when you plug in zero, uh, zero to the any positive power is going to be zero again. So uh, it'll, it'll, the, the formula will be zero is equal to zero plus constant. So this, the constant C should be equal to zero. Um, so uh, arctan is equal to this uh, Taylor series. And, uh, and plus C part, the, the C part is equal to zero. We just figured out. So, so that's, that's it. Okay. Um, we could do something similar. Uh, this guy, uh, one over one minus X uh, to the second power, this thing is similar to one over one minus X, but it's the derivative of that guy. Okay, so just to be clear, I cannot get from here by substituting um, because uh, I'm not squaring just the x, right? I'm squaring the one minus x thing. Um, but uh, if you take the derivative of this guy, uh, it's one over one minus x to the power of two. Um, and I know what the power series for this guy looks like. Sorry, the Taylor series. And then I could just use power rule, uh, the derivative this time. I'm running out of room. Uh, let's see. Okay. And um, if we set n equals to zero, the first term is uh, just zero because it's zero times um, x uh, zero minus one. So we could just might as well start the series at one. Okay. So that's that's the, the Taylor series for this guy. So we could integrate and differentiate um, Taylor series. And all you have to know is power rules. So that's, that's like the easiest rule of all the, the derivative and integral rules. So um, that's, that's kind of nice. Uh, Taylor series, if you, a function and make it into a Taylor series, then 
differentiation rule is always just the power rule, um, which is nice. Um, and you could um, also add the Taylor series as well. So e to the two x looks like this. Okay, I already distributed the, the exponent n, so I substituted 2x. Um, and the Taylor series for this guy, just x to the n. And if you have two Taylor series, uh, you could just add the exponents, um, sorry, add the coefficients for the same power of x uh, together. So in this case, the, the coefficient for the first series is this guy. And coefficient for the second series is just one. Combine it for the same power of x. And this would be the Taylor series for the sum of these two functions. Okay, so you could just kind of uh, compare the exponents and just add the coefficients together and just collect like terms. Um, you could do that with the infinite series as well. All right, so uh, using these four techniques, uh, you can get a lot of new uh, formula for Taylor series uh, from just the five that I mentioned earlier. Okay, um, and uh, boy, this, this is at the end of the quarter and um, I, I can't cover all of the, uh, the applications of Taylor series, but Taylor series is very, very useful. Um, so I've already mentioned um, that it might be uh, useful in engineering by looking at just enough terms and looking at how the air is controlled. Uh, you could also imagine how it's useful in science, right? Like if you measure some, some position and velocity and acceleration uh, that's like looking at the first three terms of the Taylor series, um, and then also looking at the errors after that. Um, it's useful in mathematics world as well. So let me just give you just two very straightforward application. Um, this I kind of mentioned earlier, it makes calculus easier because all you have to know uh, after turning a function into a Taylor series is just a power rule. So remember, this is an integral that we didn't know how to do in Calc 2 class. Um, but uh, if you turn it into Taylor series, you could still integrate um, because it's just power rule, right? So, so by substitution, we know what the uh, Taylor series look like. Okay, and then um, you can integrate just term by term using the, the power rule. So you just add one to the power and then divide by that new power and n factorial is still there. So this would be uh, the antiderivative of e to the negative x squared. Um, Plus the constant. So um, I, I don't want to like a trivialize other calculus methods um, because in some sense I just kind of hid the difficulty away, right? Um, so like yeah, this is an antiderivative of e to the negative x squared, um, but the difficulty is that this is infinite series, so you're still kind of taking a limit. Um, so there's still uh, things to work out, right? Um, it's not completely, uh, I mean, it, it's a useful technique, but it doesn't completely solve the problem, um, is what I wanted to mention. And um, actually, knowing Taylor series allow you to compute insane uh, infinite series that we didn't know how to compute before. In fact, we only had few examples of infinite series that we could compute, like a geometric series, yes, uh, and telescoping series, yes. Uh, and then there weren't too many other techniques that we could use to integrate, uh, sorry, to sum up infinitely many things. Um, 
But if you kind of recognize, like for example, this is an infinite series. Um, when you look at this, you might realize, oh, this is very similar to the cosine Taylor series. So if you were able to recognize that, you compare and then you say, well, the difference is that instead of um, x to the 2n, you have pi to the 2n. Well, that's, that's exactly Taylor series where you plug in pi into the x. So uh, this series is going to be just cosine of pi, which is equal to ne negative one. Okay? We just computed an infinite series by recognizing it as a Taylor series. Um, this one, uh, let's look at the, the table. Right, it's the closest to this guy, right? Negative x to the n over n. Uh, so let's see, let's compare it. So natural log of one minus x looks like negative x to the n over n. So um, there's a couple things. So this I want to replace with x to the n. Uh, and then 2 to the n, I, I could actually combine and make this into negative 1 half to the n. OK. Uh, this looks very much like this, except uh, the negative sign is not there. Um, that's OK. Um, we could just put the negative sign over to the left hand side, right? So that would be the, this would be Taylor series of this guy, uh, except x is equal to negative one half. So uh, the sum is going to be negative natural log of one minus negative one half. Uh, so that's negative natural log of three halves. And that would be the uh, that would be the sum, right? So that's pretty that's pretty cool. <laughs> okay, uh, so I think I want to end the video here. Um, so now now you know Taylor series. Um, I'll see you guys later.